two, one, and welcome to the 2018 National March for Life. Hi, welcome back to Lee TV. Today's show is going to be about pro-life and the March for Life and Trudeau's approach to it and how he screwed up the Canada Summer Jobs program over it and all of that good stuff. If there was a vote on abortion though, would, you, would it be a free vote for your caucus? Or a whipped vote? Maybe she'll talk for um, That is uh, uh, an issue that uh, I've committed in my, well it, it is a tough one because one of the things that's the strength of the Liberal Party is that we draw in voices uh, from right across the country and on a range of perspectives. You know, we have uh, liberals who are economically very far to the right. We have others who are economically more to the left. We have uh, people who have a whole d uh, you know, gamut of positions. And that's been one of the strengths of the Liberal Party, that we have strong voices uh, for all sorts of different communities. Uh, but as a party, uh, we are steadfast in our belief and our position, and certainly our positions as government, uh, is that it is not uh, for any government to legislate uh, what happened, what a woman chooses to do with her body. And that is uh, the bottom line there. I have uh, made it clear that uh, future candidates uh, need to uh, be uh, completely uh, understanding that they will be expected to vote uh, pro-choice uh, on any bills. The existing MPs uh, who have been grandfathered in uh, to a certain extent uh, will be um, respected to a certain extent in their in their in their choices, uh, but our position as a party is we do not reopen that debate. I'm aware of our current uh, Canadian leadership, uh, Mr. Trudeau, um, trying to restrict debate about abortion, um, and I think that's a obviously a, a serious shortcoming of of he and his government is interesting because even the NDP was criticizing it. He said he was creating a double standard within his own party. Yeah, it is a two-tier system. You can have those views. All those people are welcome to the Liberal Party, but as soon as they want to run for office, no, they can't do that. Justin Trudeau, for his part, claimed that he was just following in the legacy of his father, Pierre Trudeau. Now, his dad did decriminalize abortion for cases where it was threatening the life of the mother. Everything changed later in uh, 1988, Supreme Court ruling that struck down the abortion laws and basically left us in a legislative void. The 1988 decision did not recognize an unfettered right to abortion. It struck down the law put in place by Pierre Trudeau on the basis that it resulted in an unequal access to the decision-making hospital committees for women based on where they lived in Canada. And this is care of Don Hutchison. There was a letter that was given from the Archbishop in 1981. He had written to Trudeau and he said, what if this constitution you're creating is going to end up getting rid of abortion laws? And Pierre Trudeau said, don't worry about that. I will bring in the notwithstanding clause if that ever were the case. So what Pierre Trudeau said was, if you ever struck down the law on, ab on abortion, he would use a notwithstanding clause to make Parliament be supreme over that, and the Supreme Court ruling would basically be overruled. Here's another issue, and this has to do with the Canada Summer Jobs Program. In 2017, the Abortion Rights Coalition of Canada complained that pro-life groups receive federal funding for summer jobs. In response, the government changed the application form to demand an affirmation of support for abortion and gender diversity. Organizations must now check off a box that shows their core mandate respects reproductive rights and the right to be free from discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation or gender identity or expression. Even editors at the Toronto Star decried the overreaching effort. They wondered what was to be gained by denying funds for a Catholic group to employ summer students to work at a day camp or homeless shelter. The government should fix its policy or risk looking heavy-handed at best, oppressive at worst, the editors warned. Judging by what's happened since, the government was unmoved. By the way, that was me. So the kind of oppression that we used to be fighting abroad has now come home. And this kind of assertion should disturb everybody. Whether you're a person of religious views or a person who just doesn't want to have an opinion, the government, through this action, is compelling belief. 
That has a certain totalitarian feel to it. Compelling belief is a tendency that one can see in totalitarian societies, he said, because if the government links belief to specific values that define our country, you're saying person citizenship is not as valid, or you're marginalizing them by saying you're outside the tent. So do you remember when Trudeau said a Canadian is a Canadian is a Canadian? Well, when you have things like this, uh, if you're pro-life, you're less Canadian. You can be in a Liberal Party, but you can't run for MP. Um, you can employ people, but you can't get government money to help with that employment. So this is disturbing. And in that note, there are some uh, Islamic groups that uh, have received this funding, and there's questionable links to terrorism in this regard as well. Okay, family business sues Trudeau government after losing funding for refusing to support abortion. The Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms, which I love, announced earlier this week that it has filed a court application against the Federal Minister of Employment, Workforce, and Labor, Patty Hadu. Oh yeah, here's what happens when you don't sign it. Sign the box. The essential requirements listed below are missing from your application, and therefore we are unable to determine your organization's eligibility or the eligibility of the activities proposed in your application. Well, we got an application of our own right here. It is a court application. I hope they win. I want to show you now an interview I did with somebody at the March for Life in Victoria, uh, along with some highlights. And it was interesting here watching these youth. Look at this. They're taking a stand, literally. These people came from across the, they came from the mainland with their school. There were some of us who didn't even want two blocks to go to this. He's signing this thing for the Canada summer jobs. You should be able to have whatever convictions you want. Amy, why does this mean something to you? This is just so important because there are so many organizations doing so many great things and what we believe shouldn't affect whether we get to help people in our community. And I work for an organization that it has communities across the country that got denied grants this summer. How many um, were you going to employ? 40. Wow. Yeah. And we found ways to employ them on our own with the generosity of donors. And are so thankful that there are people who believe that we're allowed to do what we want, say what we want in this country. Oh, what these heretics that don't believe all of this political correctness. Here we go. Of a member for London Fanshawe. Mr. Speaker, this Friday, Canada will be held accountable for its human rights record at our third periodic review at the UN. Safe and equal access to abortion is the right of all Canadians, yet this remains shockingly inconsistent. Mm -hmm. Women living in rural areas often travel unacceptable distances to access an abortion clinic. It's unconscionable. When will this government use the Canada Health Act to grant all Canadians their right to safe and equal access to abortion? Here, here. Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I thank the member opposite for her question and her hard work standing up and fighting for women's rights right across the country. We agree with her. We know that it's safe and easy access, responsible access, affordable access uh, to reproductive health services, uh, including abortions, uh, is of fundamental importance to all Canadians. That's why uh, we move forward on ensuring that all provinces are offering that. We continue to work right across the country to ensure that the Canada Health Act is, uh, is brought in, and we will always be unequivocal in standing up for a woman's right to choose. The Honourable Member for Salaberry sur Roy. I can't believe what I just heard, Mr. Speaker. Order. Alors. The Honourable Member for Salaberry sur Roy. It's a right and everyone needs to understand that, Mr. Speaker. not a right. We've already shown it's not a right. Hey everyone, it's Mike Shooting here. Again, I'm at the National March for Life. It's Thursday, May 10th. Meet up with some of my good friends, Alex Agrodnik from Saskatchewan, Dvorak Gilman from Southern Ontario. 
the march has been actually stopped by pro-choice protesters. I would call them anarchists. These people are dressed in all manner of apparel, and there's probably one police officer here for every protester. Uh, the situation is getting a lot more tense as we've been waiting. The people united, will never be defeated. The people united, will never be defeated. The people united, will never be something from the bridgehead. If Canada's media was honest, they would report on the violence and lawbreaking of abortion activists. Yes. Look at this picture here. There's a hammer and a sickle and the march for life. Okay, so if there was anyone who was against life, it was the communists. Think about that. Mao's Red China uh, killed 45 million Chinese during the so-called Great Leap Forward which was actually fewer dead bodies than Mao had been anticipating. He originally thought it'd be 52 million. Oh, what a man of mercy. Stalin, how many was that? What, 30 million? Our pro-life activists are subject to harassment, threats, and violence all the time. Joyce Arthur of the Abortion Rights Coalition of Canada even justified violence against pro-lifers by saying that pro-life activism simply provokes people. Not our fault, we were provoked. Oh, but if you wear scanty clothes and a man responds and a judge says you know you might want to think about what you're wearing and then they all have a slut walk saying we're not supposed to respond to that all right so provokes people uh additionally abortion activists regularly make false accusations against pro-lifers but when they're exposed it barely makes a ripple in the same media outlets that had gleefully published every detail of the false applications there you have it for months the canadian media has falsely declared that bubble zones are necessary because of pro-life harassment without providing a shred of evidence for their assertion. But when peaceful pro-life protesters are blockaded off by angry lawbreakers wielding a symbol that has presided over more murders than the Nazi swastika in Canada's capital, not a whisper. This year there are marches for life in England, France, Ireland, Washington, D.C., New York, Los Angeles, Chicago, and over 60 other cities throughout the world. People... That's about it for Lee TV today. Thanks for watching, everyone. This takes a lot of time to pull together, so if you would like to support me on Patreon, it would help keep me alive. And it's patreon.com slash Lee TV. I'm going to leave you with some scenes from the March for Life in Ottawa, courtesy of uh, another channel. Have a great day, everybody. Be thankful for your life. Let's march! Campaign Life Coalition! The organizers of this amazing event, which is also the largest pro-life demonstration in Canada. Camp in Life has been organizing the march for 21 years, and this year marks their 40th year of their commitment to restoring the culture of life in Canada. We have a right to a place at the democratic table. And that is what we're exercising here on Parliament Hill. I regret my abortion and feel called to share my story of hurt and healing. And that is why I am silent no more. Thank you. I thought I would be doing my child a great service by giving them a death sentence they did not ask for but God made something out of nothing. When I chose life, my life began. We are pro-life. We vote. Pro Canadians are pro-life. All right. Are you thankful for the gift of life today? I believe that the very most fundamental human right that any government can give to its people is the right to life. It is time for Canada to, at the very least, come into line with every other democracy in the world and extend legal protection to preborn children. Raise your voices and stand with me and use your voice so we together can make Ontario and make Canada this great nation the place it should be where we have human rights and free speech for all. Thank you very much.